Lionesses are the chief hunters of the pride. But the rainy season has raised water levels and made islands of the female's favorite hunting grounds. She can comfortably swim across, but her cubs would be a target for predators lurking below the surface. She can't risk it. The lakeshore is a provider, but also harbors danger. She needs to feed her cubs, but with crocs patrolling the shallows, she could easily lose one or all of them. As long as their father and mother are there to protect them, the cubs are safe. But it's in the nature of things for the young to overthrow the old. A rival will defeat their father, and he'll be exiled from the pride. Any new dominant male will kill cubs that are two or three years of age, not his own. So the three brothers are forced to head out into the world to find a new pride. Now at five years old, Takunda, Gamwe, and Zendoga are nearing the end of a long journey through the Zambezi Valley as nomadic males. They're on a mission to secure their bloodline. It's time to settle down. And this pride looks inviting. It's another lakeshore pride made up of six lionesses, all related. The female at the center is Nabule, one of the oldest and more dominant than the others, who are mainly her sisters, daughters, and aunts. There are no males in this pride, which makes it an easy one for the brothers to take over. Until the three males arrive, life goes on as usual for the lionesses, which means long hunting excursions, followed by long naps. Long before lions evolved, crocodile ancestors roamed the earth they were here when dinosaurs reigned. Though crocs have evolved over millions of years, they are still formidable carnivores, covered in heavy armor and capable of bone-crushing bites. They have to make a living here, just like the lions. And they aren't easily intimidated. Yesterday, the lions, led by Nabule, took down this aging hippo and fed on it for hours. But tonight, a croc has shown up to take advantage of this free meal. Nabule is not amused and lets the reptile know it. 
This big piece of meat should be safe further up on land. But these crocs don't stop at the water's edge. Despite the danger, Nabule can't allow this incursion into her territory. When there's this much meat at stake, crocs will leave familiar territory to challenge a lion on her own turf. Here, the odds favor the land predator. She wins this skirmish. But there will be more. Many more. For now, however, Nabule and the rest of the pride have other concerns. Takunda, Gamwe, and Zendoga have finally arrived after wandering the valley. And they're ready for love. Luck is with them. There's no dominant male in this pride that they'd have to overthrow before they have the opportunity to mate. On the other hand, they're facing another challenge. No male gets an easy pass at females. You have to prove your worth. And no one needs more impressing than Nabule. She'll mate with them once she's come into heat. As long as the brothers have kept their position in the pride. But she won't conceive until the males have proven that they can defend the group and help in the hunt. Lions and crocs share Lake Kariba with another powerful creature. One of the most aggressive and dangerous animals in Africa. Even the top predators give hippos a wide berth. And if a croc gets too close, these two-ton behemoths will go after them. But today is a day of beginnings. A new member has joined the herd. Even a newborn calf is pretty big. Between 50 and 100 pounds, it's the time of the season when many animals have young ones. As big as the hippos are, the impala have nothing to fear. The river horses eat almost nothing but grass. Nor does the hippo family have much to fear from the lions. They usually keep their distance unless there's an unprotected calf or an old or sick adult. But there are other easier prey for the lions. And when night falls, the hunt begins. The lake has many moods. Calm can go to stormy in a heartbeat. And when breezes turn to gusts, prey animals lose their best defense. The ability to smell predators. The odds are now in the lioness's favor. The water buck can sense the danger. but the constantly shifting winds make it impossible to tell where their enemies are. Nabule and two other females wait for the right moment to strike. It's not difficult for a hunting party of lions to take small prey, but it'll take more than a water buck calf to feed a pride this size.
To catch larger quarry, they may need to bring the males into the hunt. But first, they have to make sure the brothers are up to the task. Dakunda proves he is by making a kill on his own. An Impala. He's in his prime now, fast and strong, weighing about 500 pounds. A quality not lost on the boule, who has heard the commotion and comes to investigate. The smell of fresh blood intoxicates her. She'd like to share in the meat, but that's a risky proposition. Best to take the submissive position. The move works. Nabule gets to eat, and Takunda is now that much closer to being welcomed into the pride. The following day, the three brothers are still being checked out by the pride females. But it's starting to look like the lionesses are getting used to them. At just the right time, the females go into heat and become receptive to the mating game. The males will mate with as many females as possible. Sindoga is looking for a new partner. Unfortunately, Gamwe has gotten here first. And with lions, three definitely is a crowd. Sometimes laying claim to your territory can cause conflicts over mating rights. Gamwe and Zendoga have squared off over a female. Though smaller than his brother, it seems that Gamwe is the more aggressive of the two. And he drives Zendoga away. As the sun sets, the time is right for hunting. It's mating season for Impala, which are numerous in the Zambezi. Over the course of weeks, rutting rams fight it out for dominance. The winner gets to mate with all the ewes in his territory. But all the fighting wears out the males. distracts them from something else they should be thinking of. Lake water provides a barrier that makes it harder for Impala to escape. Nabule, the hunter queen, bides her time. Slowly, she and the other lionesses in the hunting party edge closer. They blend almost invisibly into the dry grass.
then she strikes. This young Impala will feed the three hunters for now. But there are more lionesses who are otherwise engaged. Not to mention the three brothers who have made themselves part of the pride. Takunda, Gamwe, and Zindoga are going to have to join in the hunt. The next day, Nobule leads the other females to their favorite hunting ground on an island formed by recent heavy rains. It's a bit of a trek. And they have to negotiate a few water crossings. They know always to check for crocodiles lurking unseen below the surface. Most are quick to leap across. But there's always one that lags behind. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Pride's territory, the three males, now friends again, are on patrol. Their duties go beyond siring children. They're responsible for keeping out new nomadic males looking for pride to take over. It's becoming their pride now. And they make sure that's clear to anyone who may be listening. A huge advantage for this band of three Lone challengers will find it much harder to overthrow them. In the morning, Nabule takes point as the lionesses head out to the island. As usual, their nemesis the crocs keep watch for easy meat. She has to be careful. But there is food here, lots of it. Buffalo are drawn to the plentiful grass that grows here after the ground has been soaked by torrential rain. The lions are drawn to the buffalo. It seems the lionesses are going it alone again today, while Gamwe and Zendoga do what lions do best. Suddenly, there's unexpected movement. Takunda has joined the hunt. It's a good thing, too. Buffalo are one of the only animals that will feed the whole pride fight fiercely in defense of the herd, especially their calves. The buffalo herd has relocated to the woodland near the shore, but they've been shadowed. As powerful as they are, lions will look first for the old, the very young, and the sick or injured. The buffalo form a circle to protect their young. It 
may be too late. One calf didn't make it in. And with Takunda in the area, its fate is sealed. The herd's attempts to rescue the calf are pointless. It's already dead. The best this buffalo can do is gore one of the females with its sharp horns. A small comfort. They've made a kill. But it'll take more than a baby calf if this pride is to survive. After last night's attack on a buffalo herd, one of the brothers is clearly injured. Takunda is limping. He may have gotten on the wrong side of the buffalo's horns. Injuries are part of what it means to be a lion. This battle may be one of many more to come. As Takunda fights to prove his place in the pride hierarchy. A couple of days later, Nabule has her eye on an unlikely target. She's joined by the other pride females. At first, Hippos don't seem as terrifying as lions or crocs. And they're not carnivores. But you take them on at your own peril. This pot of hippos is on the shore for their favorite food, grass. The cow is all too aware of the danger her calf is in. So she stays close and they retreat to the water. But as darkness falls, she gets more agitated. She doesn't want these lions anywhere near her baby. And suddenly, she crashes out of the lake to make sure they know it. Now the female's exposed. Six lions are a formidable hunting party. But without the three males, maybe not quite enough for an animal like this. The pride drives the cow into the scrub. How can you take down a creature whose hide you can't even penetrate? She will make it back safely to the water. And the lions will once again go hungry. Lions are by far the most social of the big cats. Their membership in a pride offers great benefits. But not all activities in a lion's life are social. Sometimes a lion has to hunt on his own. Zindoga can hunt by himself. But he uses different techniques from the team hunting lionesses. The success rate is better as part of a team. This eagle is made for the solo kill. But 
being in a pride has even greater rewards. The three brothers have been here for six months now and accepted as mates by the pride's females. And their presence has borne much fruit. Nabule has hidden her two eight-week-old cubs away in thick vegetation apart from the rest of the pride. At this age, they still need their mother's milk, but they've started to eat meat as well. Although, they're still working on their technique. Soon, their world will expand as they enter the pride and meet other lions their own age. But until it's time for their first lesson, Nabule practices patience. Over the last six months, Nabule's cubs have thrived. They are full-fledged members of the pride now, and half a year of play fighting has honed their coordination. Tonight's hunt isn't just for food. It will also function as a lesson. Instinct has taught the cubs that they need to chase. And they need to kill. Nabule stays close as they attempt to make their first capture. They may not be strong enough yet to finish the job, but when they are, this practice will be invaluable. In the wild, the young learn early that they have to fight to survive. And that often, they have to grow up faster than they expected. A hippo calf has unwittingly angered a rogue bull. Perhaps by getting just a little too close. And the bull is coming after it. The calf's mother rushes to protect it. But the male is bigger and stronger. His deadly tusks slice into her flesh. And soon, she is stumbling. The following morning, the calf has somehow gotten away safely. But the same cannot be said for its mother. She is fatally wounded. The calf rests by her mother's side and will not be coaxed away. until the cow takes her last breath. It's getting dark, and this will soon be a dangerous place to be. The pride is here, led by Nubule. And soon, the crocs are moving in. This is a rare opportunity. There's enough here that both lions and crocs can fill their bellies. But as soon as the lion's attention wanders, 
crocs start to pull the carcass out into the water. Crocodiles don't really like to share. By daybreak, even the crocs haven't made much of a dent in the 3,000 pound carcass. Nabule eyes it hungrily. But she's not about to go into these croc infested waters. The days come and the days go. The lions haven't had a filling meal in weeks. They are getting thinner. full-grown buffalo would be a lifesaver. And this morning, the chances are as good as they'll ever be. The buffalo have returned to these grazing lands. is here. And so are the other females. For this giant prey, it'll take more than just the lionesses to feed this hungry pride. Buffalo are dangerous. Males can weigh nearly 2,000 pounds, and their horns are deadly. The best chance Nabule and the lionesses have of taking one of these huge animals is if the males join in the hunt. And as if on cue, they're here. With the brothers Takunda, Gamwe, and Zendoga in the mix, the lions have a good chance. But by now, the herd has sensed danger nearby. So they move towards the woods, and the lions set the trap. Silence is crucial. Suddenly, a bull races towards Nabule and two other females, trying to scare them off. But as it does, the males flank the herd and descend from one side, while the females race at the buffalo from the other. The herd reacts. costly mistake. This kill is a lifesaver. The entire pride will gorge on it until nothing is left. The brothers were key to the successful hunt. And their participation signals that they've been fully integrated into the pride at last. The lake giveth and the lake taketh away. 
Like everything else in nature, life here is a trade-off. The boundary zone between land and water can be the difference between life and death. But this time, in this place, Takunda, Gamwe, and Zindoga have not just survived, but prospered. They have left one family and become part of another. Nubule has found strong protectors for her cubs. If luck is with them, they too will grow to adulthood. Find a pride of their own and lead them to become the new rulers of the lakeshore. <laughs>